I just finished watching a video by Steve Leto, Leto's Law. I think he's up in Michigan, car country someplace. Um, I respect him quite a bit, and he had a video, and my God, I didn't realize I was an error, but I have been an error. I've been doing the best I can to disclose things to you. When you buy one of these Bibles that I recommend, I get a commission off it, provided you follow the link. If you follow the link, <clears throat> I get a healthy commission. It's not insignificant. I haven't gotten the commission all year, to be honest with you. And I negotiated to get a little bit more of a commission because I understand authorship and the markup in books. So I had an argument, but I also knew I didn't have an argument because it was up to his generosity, no matter what, because he's given me. I mean, I've been very good at selling Bibles for him. And he hasn't raised the price up yet. And I, I guess that's because he knows I haven't sold many. But I'm looking forward to the day when he raises the price up. And he's making more money. And as a result of my efforts, I'd really like that. I mean, to me, that's the kind of success that I want to I want to share in. I mean, I, I want to be productive. I, I want to sell the Bibles. Um, will it change your life? Oh, I definitely can tell you. I think it'll change your life. I, I, well, I think it will. I mean, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll become a paperweight for you or, or some sort of conversation piece on your, you know, on, <clears throat> on the table in front of your couch there. But I don't know. I think that it'll change your life if you read it. I think that you will definitely get a, a larger vocabulary from reading the Bible. <clears throat> One of the pastors suggested that. and He liked the King James Version. He also said, you don't want a copywritten Bible. Well, this Bible is the King James, and it is copywritten. And it's the best version to date. <clears throat> it is excellent. Uh, I've spent more time in the old King James than I have in the proper name. King James Bible. Uh, I just had the time. I'm getting more time in this particular Bible. Matter of fact, I recently broke the binding on this. It didn't come apart badly or terribly. It's still very useful. Not like the other uh, hardbacks that I have that come apart and it's almost you almost can't use them. The other thing is I don't throw out a Bible. I save it. Because I dog air it, I study it, I mark it up. Now, is it the Holy Bible? It ain't so holy you can't study it. It ain't so holy you can't write in the book. <clears throat> I like to put words and definitions. Uh, Strong's Concordance word numbers in there. I like to put other verses in there that, that aren't quite cross-referenced that I discover are related to the verses. I believe in the principle the Bible interprets itself. I also believe that if I can turn this nation into 5% Bible readers, and I'm talking daily Bible readers, we got it made, baby. We'll get our republic back, hands down. I get 3%, I think we get it. 3%, I think we take it right back. 5%, they don't get it back from us ever. Yeah, but a daily Bible reader is kind of a rare critter. And not many people read books to begin with. And a lot of people just don't like the Bible. They're antagonized by it. You know, what do they say? Uh, the reason there's no, the Ten Commandments are written are not written on the courthouse walls is because it would uh, the, the attorneys would complain it created a hostile environment. Well, it's kind of a cute joke in a way, but of course, there's different versions of the Bible. There's different translations, slight difference here, slight difference there. Some have major differences to them. In this version of the Bible, I make fewer assumptions. I get carried away a little bit less. And if you listen to me, you know I get carried away quite a bit because I do a lot of divergent thinking and I brainstorm on this stuff and I try to consider it at all levels possible. I don't want to miss anything. And I know I probably make some ideas that you folks go, man, God, I can't believe you said that, thinking that. I wouldn't say that if I thought that. Well, I'm saying it anyway. Why? Because we need to end censorship. You need to learn how to think. I'm showing you how I think. I'm not telling you you've got to think the same way. I, that'd be pretty creepy if you thought the same way as me. I don't think I'd like that very much, to be honest with you. 
<clears throat> I really want the people to turn into this and listen to me. I want them to be better than me. My mentor said that a long time ago, and I did my best to live up to what he wanted. I've had several mentors, though. I had several problems. I had need for all of that fathering, parenting, tutelage, guidance. I really was pretty doggone lost. And when push came to shove and I was in my late 30s, I was trying to establish a relationship with my father. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't like me. I would call up, and the moment he found out who it was, he would go into a tirade. And I had to pray for years and work my ass off to build a relationship with my father. <clears throat> I had a lot of interference in the family. It uh, was not a good family for me yet. From where I'm at today, I guess I'm supposed to say it turned out perfectly and it was great. It was hunky-dory, peachy. No, it wasn't. It was rather difficult. And I, I still have difficulties as a result of that. I have, I have difficulties now. Um, I'm too gullible, uh, too trusting, too passive, not assertive enough. Um, I let people get away with doing things behind my back and being ignorant of it. Family. I guess family's not family anymore. Um, I'd learned some things from my family, and I, I think some of the things I learned were not that good. There were some problems. I definitely was the black sheep. Um, what can I tell you? The scapegoat probably quite often. I became a rescuer and it became my pathology. I became a professional rescuer. I prayed to God at the time, I didn't know his name, to father me and parent me. I was pretty sincere. I was pretty much in tears some of the time too. I read self-help books. I did everything I could to lift myself up. The prayers, I think, helped me a lot, but it wasn't until I sat down totally humbled by a couple of strokes reading the Bible that it really worked on me because I gave it a chance. Actually, I gave myself a chance. So if I could go back and say anything to myself right now, I would go back to maybe when I was about five years of age and I would have uh, warned myself, cautioned myself to uh, be wary of my family and uh, that my brother mother had some problems and um, I would have read the Bible a lot sooner, a lot earlier but who knows, I would have turned out then, I just don't know I know a man chooses his path and God lays out his steps in that path. You know, when I look back, I see him at work in my life very purposely, and I can see some of the reasons why I went through some, some things, but some of the things were just too doggone hard, or I'm just not very happy with it, I'll, I'll admit that. And, but here I am, I'm in a place now where my country's been destroyed, and people don't understand that, they don't realize that, they haven't even woken up to it. The, religions have been the religion has been taken over. The seminaries were taken over a long time ago. Uh, Bible translators also were taken over. And this Bible is the closest thing to the right stuff you're going to find. Um, we have put back in the proper name of Yahweh. And we've got in the proper name and title for Yeshua the Messiah. Um, we through this Bible have less of a man-made religion. There's less man in the making of our belief systems today. Now, of course, you can hear me tune into this channel. You can hear me and my mind at work come, coming up with things, sometimes conjuring up things because some of the amalgams I attempt are so weird. I'll admit that. Um, 
I do think that we need to develop more flexibility, but of course the characteristic of Israelites are we're stiff-necked people. We're kind of difficult to change. And there are some advantages to that. You know, we're pretty stalwart. You know, we're easily understood. And maybe the disadvantages were too easily predicted. Excuse me. So, do buy my Bibles. Um, my commission is 25%. I, I asked for 33 and a third percent because uh, that's, that's what a uh, brick-and-mortar bookstore collects when they sell a Bible. Uh, when they sell a book, the, the model is that a third of the uh, a third of the value of the book goes uh, between the publisher and the author, so it gets split. So you get approximately fifteen or thirty percent of the value, and hardback books are worth more, so you get more value out of those. So out of a out of a $15 paperback, paperbacks used to be only $15. It seemed like it was a standard for quite a while. Um, a, an author and the, the publisher would get $5 in royalties and you would share that. And sadly, a lot of the publishers would take your business expenses and their business expenses out of your share. It's not very fair. And a third of it went to the uh, retailer, the bookseller. And a third of it was basically the cost of producing it, the cost of you know printing it up, the ink, the paper, the labor, the binding, uh, legal fees establishing it. In the case of this Bible, the legal fees establishing it were pretty hefty because it took five years to negotiate with the Crown of England to get the proper international rights so this Bible could be sold across the whole world. So that's why it's copyrighted, yet it's still cheaper than the competition. If you look at prices, the prices on these Bibles are at least half of what the competition is. Um, Zondervan used to sell a hardback for $80. I, I'm pretty sure they've gone up to 100 now. Um, we're selling a leatherette copy for 40 or $50, and the deluxe copies are in the $60 range, if, if I remember correctly. You know, I do recommend you invest in these. Get yourself a large print to have handy for sure. Uh, maybe a smaller one that you can hold in your lap and carry with you. Uh, my eyes, they, I can see that with reading glasses. And, and it's comfortable to hold because it's pretty light. Uh, somebody wanted me to sign one, so they forwarded it to me. Published at an odd request. I'm like thinking, well, yeah, it's not like I wrote this Bible. But I am. I am pushing it forward as best I can. See, my ancestor um, was instrumental in the 1611 King James Bible. And uh, I'm trying to make up for him a little bit. He wasn't a nice man. They had planned the new world. They planned America and how America was going to be used before America was founded. Uh, yeah, they planned stuff in advance. They have an incredible knowledge base, um, probably the best knowledge base on the whole planet. Talk about knowledge of good and evil. They got all that knowledge. And you're going to say, who are they? Well, uh, they keep themselves hidden from the rest of us for good cause and good reason, because if we knew who they were, we'd probably go after them. I don't know if I can tell you that they're good guys or evil guys. I think they're basically evil myself. But maybe humanity is just not ready to be uplifted to the next level. And I do think, by the way, that we have got incredible powers and influence, and we are co-creators with Yahweh. I think we've been given that. I think that we actually are more capable than we realize, and we have greater impact than what any of us would ever imagine. And I'm praying that's the case, because if it's the case, we can come up in our vibration, if you like the word vibes, we can vibe together, baby. I'm sorry, I guess that's just the modern term they use. I was looking for a modern guitar and that's what I found out, you know, the vibe is an important word now. 
what would I like you to do? And in the background, I'm thinking about my brother using the word copacetic, which let me know as I was on the way back to New Hampshire that something was wrong. Yeah, he interfered in my life every which way he could, sadly. Yeah, he, he uh, is a, he's not a nice man. Got everybody convinced I'm the bad one. He's the good one. Well, I've done my share of mistakes. I've lived, a, I guess, kind of a wild life. And I look back at it now and it seems pretty tame compared to what I'm observing today. Um, yeah, so I tried a lot of things. Uh, there were some things I wasn't mature enough for that I have great regrets over. If I had to give myself any advice, it would be read the Bible earlier and read it often. So I just, and just read through it the first time. Read, just keep reading through it. Things will come to you. The Holy Spirit will enlighten you. You'll start to see patterns. You'll start to recognize the characters, the plot, and study character development. And I don't like losing, using these terms in the Bible because it sounds like it's just a big play. And the sad thing is that that's what's really going on in D.C. is these wicked people that control the, the world right now are pretending that we have a government and we don't. I don't consider that a government. The media runs us more than anybody else and it's okay for them to lie. And subterf subterfuge is okay. Barack Obama made it legal to lie to the public and deceive the public. He's the man of lawlessness in the Bible, as far as I'm concerned. And Barak, Barak is the name that's used. Yahweh uses it. To just, it's the name for his chosen instrument that he uses against those who hate him. He uses Barak against his enemies. It's like a sword of lightning, a glistening sword. Or like lightning falling from on high in heaven. Remember the double lightning bolts that looked like SS. Yeah. They chose Barack's name carefully. Barry became Barack. He's still the president. He's still running things behind the scenes. Will he ever be held to account? I'm probably on the verge of being called guilty of hate speech, but I don't like community organizers because community organizers organized to kill, to maim, to wound, to destroy, to cripple. And Barack has crippled the United States of America by implanting these special agents in the government at super high levels that are beholding to the crown of England, no less or to the international bankers, or to the black pope, the pope's real boss, or to the queen of heaven, who's a real woman. There's enough evil to go around. You read the Bible and it'll start to unfold and you'll start looking at these riddles and these puzzles and put things together. And the Spirit at some point is going to move on you and going to, going to give you that bolt of lightning, that flash of insight. And you're going to be able to share it with the rest of us. Believe me, we all want to hear from you if you're out there. As Andy said, what I give for a good spirit of Yah, a good prophet of Yahweh. That's what Andy wanted. He wanted a a real prophet. And I'm like, man, I don't think I really want to be around one of those dudes. Those guys had so much power. Wielded so much authority. You really need to read the prophets. The law and the prophets are important. The law was the law Moses established in the first five books, the Pentateuch. So spend some time there. America's in the first book of the Bible, by the way. The Great Nation, written in towards the end of the book of Genesis. That's us. Don't tell me America's not the Bible. Your pastor's telling you that? <sighs> Poppycock. He went to one of their seminaries. He's a professional, all right.
our founders gave, gave us some incredible documents and they knew what we were going to be facing. I'm convinced they knew what we were going to be dealing with because they gave us a way to get out of this. And you and I don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to reestablish it one increment at a time. We got to plug up those holes in our leaky roof one hole at a time. And each one of them requires different attention. Very ideographic, very individual. We all share the same leaky roof. We got the same bunch of holes to address. And I mean that on a few other levels too. I want you to buy my Bible. I do get a 25% commission when you buy one of those. I've actually gotten as much given to me in gifts as I have in commissions. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to get my ministry going. I've got a t-shirt vendor. I'm going to make a little bit of money off that too. He's already laid it out for me. And I mean, he's a pro. And the cost of the t-shirts, I was shocked. Probably have to go up because I know postage is going to go up. But I mean, they were way under 20 bucks. I mean, most everybody wants to sell you a t-shirt for 30, 40, 50 dollars or something. And the sayings, well... I guess I'm going to be the guilty party on those. And if you got some input on those, I'd appreciate it. Do I put my name on it? The name of the channel? Do I put my, you know, the nickname that I go by? Uh, do I put my, my full name with credential? Put what my middle name, the family call me by, or the first name most people know me by, or just the last name? You know, what, what do I need to put on these t-shirts to, to brand them and make my mark? Do I want to run for president on these t-shirts? Now, that's one that scares the heck out of me because they got some secret laws and rules. And I don't want to go to prison like that one boy did for five years because the CIA set his ass up and they sentenced him to five years because he ran against Bush Sr. He actually was a viable alternative to Bush. Genius of a man. Also from New Hampshire, but he was a name changer. The nice thing about him is he pointed out our enemy was the crown of Britain, the British. Yes, the Bar Association of Britain is part of the problem. There's no Bar Association except the British Bar Association. And your esquires, your titles, just below the knights are esquires. They're all part of the British Regency. They've been ruling this country almost since its inception. And the greatest one of all, the most notorious one of all, you worship is Abraham Lincoln, whose real last name should have been Springsteen. Yeah. He was your first black president, your first Native American Indian Mongoloid president, and your first Jewish president. Right. Rothschild and their maids are famous, and they ended up producing an A. A. Springs, who shortened his name to Springsteen. He lived in Alabama. He left his estate, basically the northwest corner of Alabama. I mean, all that. That's beautiful land. It's huge. Muscle Shoals and all that up there. He left that to his son, and that's how we know that A. A. Springs' son was Honest Abe, who wasn't so honest who destroyed our republic. And he didn't free anybody, baby. He enslaved us all. He set that he set that up. Yes, we're all enslaved by that 14th Amendment. May Yahweh bless. This is going to be like 186. And I'm just going to put on here full disclosure. Oh, oh, one more disclosure. Navaj, I like the system. If you hit the link, yeah, I'm supposed to get $20 in credit. I never have gotten it. Of course, you have to order so much up before you get free shipping and can afford whatever. So I'm sure they've got that figured out so they don't just hand that to me or give that straight ahead to me. But if you hit that link, they knock $20 off your order and make sure they do that and negotiate up with them by God and tell them I sent you. Because, I mean, 
And there's another product I want to endorse, but they would only give me a 5% commission. It really wasn't worth establishing link, and I told them that. But it's quite good. Biofarms Methylene Blue. It is... Oh, my God. I get excited. Ah. <sighs> type of medicine that we don't use today we don't hear the word uh, metabolic medicine and it helps you if I don't use it I have certain keywords that I cannot enunciate uh, pronounce properly I can't enunciate properly a few words so you may have some keywords and if you're having problems getting that part of your brain to fire and you're having problems getting access to words it might, it might help you. I can't really say that. I mean, it's. I think it's good. The blue comes. I think it's biblical. Don't hold me to that. It just might be wishing it was. But it seems like blue was one of the important colors always listed early in the Bible. And for some reason, I'm thinking methylene blue. Oh, and it was the original dye for blue jeans. It's a dye. Don't drop it on anything. It'll turn blue. I put it on my white Corian counters and I have a heck of a time getting it out and I scrub it out as fast as I can. But it's almost like indelible ink. It's a beautiful blue. You want to dye some clothing blue? Methylene blue, I'm sure will do it. All right, that's it. We're going to call it at that. And do buy my Bibles. Um, stay tuned for the t-shirts. I got to get off my duff and get a letter off on that today. I've got to change my appointments. I didn't sleep very good last night. I'm under a lot of stress. The uh, the RV repair place is uh, hot on my trail. Well, I look forward to the day in court because it's, it is a confusing situation. And I would love to say I know what's right and what's best, but I don't know. I think a judge needs to make a decision on this. I think the judge needs to hear all parties. I don't think anybody's going to look particularly good in this, and I think the judge is going to she's going to earn her salary on this one. I'm pretty sure we'll be going before that the female judge out this way. The problem I have is to get this rig fixed. I got to take it out of state. I'm not going to stick around, and I don't mind getting served. Just do me the favor and either do let me do it over the telephone and submit documents through the mail or. Or, or wait until I can get in the courtroom face to face. That I don't mind if they're willing to delay it a little bit. Because uh, I want to be heard. You know, I'm getting to be a bit of an old man. And the judge, she was pretty sharp. She always has some questions to ask herself. And, uh, well, I'm hoping I hear a decision that that's good. Good for everybody. And it's a confusing situation to say the least they definitely put the screws to me and took advantage of me and i want to make make that known in court of law they also threatened me threatened to slash my tires and put my windows out yeah i've already documented that um they'll probably want to deny it but okay fine let them deny it i'm holding to it I think they need to lose based on that, to be honest with you, but I don't know if that's fair. I don't know what's fair, to be honest with you. I, I am going to do my best to get this rig properly diagnosed and properly repaired. And then I'm going to take my dog on invoices, and I'm going to I'm saving everything. I'm going to take the time, and I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to charge me what they should have charged me, and I'm going to deduct from it the damages that, well, that they're responsible for. And if there's anything that should be shared damages, then I'm going to do half of that. Um, but I'm really pretty upset. You get in my face and you bully me. Not not once, but twice. you got the tall guy bullying me too. And you're trying to tell me he wasn't bullying me. You're going to lean into my face and you're going to tell me when you're ripping me off on the bill that there's nothing that can be done about it. Oh, and that's not bullying. That's strong-arming in my book. It's not right. Forgive me, folks. Here I am airing my dirty laundry once again in public. Look, pray for me. 
let's get this show on the road. I want to visit people around the country. I do want to sell these Bibles. I really want to see this take off. Um, I'm looking at probably nine bucks a gallon for fuel this summer. I'm not going to be able to go nearly as far as I'd like to go. And I'm going to have to take it slow just so I can spend time. Because I think we've already lost the world reserve currency status. And the day that really is acknowledged, our gas goes to nine bucks a gallon right now. Diesel, nine bucks a gallon right then and there. And you'll say it's not fair. And I'm going to tell you, well, they've been paying that in Europe for a while. Uh, what's not fair is how we've been exporting our inflation which has turned us into liars and thieves around the planet. And I don't think the American people are ready for the truth. The truth is we haven't been paying our fair share. We haven't been honest in our dealings with them. We've been bullies. We formed, we built an empire, and we shouldn't be an empire. And not only that, but the people that took us over, they built an empire, and they shouldn't be an empire either. Or did the Babylonians take them over? It's hard to track these identities, folks. That's why I need your help and input on these things. Yahweh bless.